Hi there. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Rose Grunewald. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! And I'm coming at you today from my Stampin' Studio here in New Holstein, Wisconsin. I have a video tutorial for you today for this gorgeous Christmas card. I featured this card along with a couple others in a recent virtual stamp class that I held on my Facebook page, Country Cards by Rose. We had a blast making gender neutral cards that you can send to the special men in your life. Uh, this video tutorial is a clip taken from that class. I think that you'll really enjoy it. So let's get stamping. Is this a little bit better? I think brighter might be better. Here is our gorgeous card that we're going to make. You've noticed we've got some color transition going on here. Uh, believe it or not, this card is really simple. So we're going to step by step. All right. First, this card, by the way, um, it's using the In the Pine bundle. I love this bundle. When you build them, you save 10%. That's great. Things. That's awesome. Um, the dies, you've got a couple pine tree dies, um, and then you've got a couple silhouettes. You can make them snow, you like to do with these squigglies. And then you've got these great um, trees that you can stamp. So I love this card because you've got a season's greetings and the card we're making tonight, this is the sentiment we're using. But we also have thinking of you, which is such a simple saying. It could be used for sympathy, could be used just as a friendly, generic, kind of neutral greeting. And three types of cardstock tonight. We've got some vellum for a little detail, um, some are silver foil sheets for those tr pretty trees. And then we're using our in color Misty Moonlight. Uh, Miss favorites. I would love to know who here absolutely loves Misty Moonlight. Have you been crafting with it a lot? You know, at first I saw it and I thought, well, that's pretty. And the more I craft with it, I can't stop. I absolutely love this color. Um, I'm in color is, you guys. Let me know in the comments. Okay, so let me find my bone folder. We've got only to this card. Our card base is five and a half by eight and a half, and we're gonna fold and score that at four and a quarter and get our bone folder and make a nice crisp edge. Um, sharp um, folder back there. Okay. Well, the first time I saw this, I I was a little stumped how this coloring happened because this I could just pop this on here. It doesn't have, you can see side by side, it does not have the depth and dimension that this card has. So we're a bit of sponging tonight, my friends. We're going to do some tone on tone sponging. And uh, this is stamp and sponge. I've cut it in fourths, I believe. And then I just a binder clip. These actually are retired stamp clips. I saved them. Um, and all we're going to do is just tap this into our ink. Hi Deb, Catherine, so much for sharing Catherine and Julie, I see you shared. Thank you, that makes me so happy. Now listen, when we start sponging on this ink, I don't like to just go right at it on this cardstock because the tone immediately is so sharp. So I actually will always start sponging off of the cardstock first. And all we're doing is working in a circular motion and bringing that ink to our layer. Now what I'm doing is a circle here and I want to leave some space here is lightly colored or not at all. You know Lisa, I I did not get to join on stage. I did not stop in time and so I was in blending brushes and I'm super excited for them. But to be honest with you, I have them in action just yet. So I cannot wait to see some videos on these. Now as we're sponging, I'm noticing the dark areas and I'm working. A little dirty. I'm getting a little bit of ink on my finger. But that's okay. It's not really stamping if you don't get a little bit dirty, right? You know, um, sponging your card layers is a really, really great way to create, like I said, some of that dimension in your color. 
it can really make and it's not that difficult I'm really just tapping this in my ink and sponging here on my layer educated about that we can all do that right just a few tips and tricks like starting off of your paper I think that's good what do you think you like that I think that's pretty good all right I save these <laughs> although I need them because I don't quite have a sponge for every color but um, soon I probably would like to okay now you notice I've got a little bit of splotches across here and we're going to make that using our water jar. So I'm using water painters come in three sizes. Show you the other two. If I can find that. Here. Um, okay. There we go. So we have three of them. We've got this really broad brush. This is great for background watercoloring. Um, and then we've got the medium tip brush. And then for smaller details, we have this fine tip brush. I love that we have just two to choose from right now. The one I'm using is our kind of more broad brush tip. To fill these, you just unscrew this and fill this water. And then when you need water, you just squeeze it and the water goes down and comes out the brush tip. So I just like to play on my um, hands or arm or something to get an idea how wet my brush is. It's pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flick this hard so I can lift some of that ink that I just sponged on here in the places where the water splotches hit. Now if you want, these are kind of small splotches, if you bigger splotches, just fill with more water. Uh, there we go. Splotches, so I'm trying to get, there we go. There, will be good. Okay, now while I wait for this to dry, we will do some, set this aside to dry. Okay, I'm bringing in my big shanks, and we are going to use our pine woods dies. That's a, a little storage tip. I was really struggling to get these um, die envelopes closed, pointing out this way. So I like to know what they're called, but I also see the images in them. So when these come to you, they like this. And what I always do, is take this piece, I set it behind so I can still see what these are called um, here. I still see what these are called, but then I slide to the back so that when I close it, this little flap here is not getting stuck. I'm using my handy old big shot here and boss machine. And we're going to use these two pine trees here. So for those of you who are just hopping on and watching, here, hello, tell me where you're watching from. All right. Now I'm just going to run this through. I want to make sure I Time. Hopefully, as I put the microphone, I hope that's not too loud for you guys. <clears throat> All right, we are going to pop these out. I know that we have a lovely foam roller and all that jet. I'll tell you what, I just keep going right back to popping these out. Old school style. It works so much better the other way I forget and I don't have it in my room yet. So I'm popping these out with my uh, punch tool here. Okay, and now we're left with these beautiful, shimmery, shiny trees that I love. I think the uh, blue tones and silver are absolutely amazing together. Okay, slide these back in here. Now I like to add 
add another layer and I think vellum helps to kind of soften and give kind of a natural look um, to this. So I have got my hand inch circle punch here and I'm just going to take this scrap of vellum and pop out a circle. Hi Trista, how you could join. Thank you so much for sharing my dough. Trista is a new stamper. I'm so excited for her to learn the run. Bear with me friends. I need to get a piece of paper here. <coughs> I almost always forget something. I think I'm super prepared and it never fails, right? Okay, um, I'm just a little bit. So let's do our stamping. There isn't a whole lot of stamping a card, of course. I could definitely do that on the end. And you know what? Maybe we will. Let me get another stick. Let me get a scrap of whisper. We can do some stamping on the inside too. <coughs> I don't want the party to stop the outside of my card. I'm going to get right on through to the end. So I'm going to cut this inside layer five and a quarter. By four. Thank you for sharing, Deb. Thank you so much. Leanne, sounds like she shared my event note with you. If you would love for friends to see the video as well. All right. I am going to grab this. Um, bigger tree right here. And yeah, I don't know how big a block I need for this girl. My big old block here. Little polymer stamps, so those of you who watch my videos know I like to use this stamp and pierce mat so that I can get a nice uh, crisp image here with these. And I'm just going to stamp this off on the side here, just like that. And I think that's just perfect for the inside of our card. And what you can do is write your scent or write your little note to whoever it is special. Hi, Sharon from Wisconsin. I'm in Wisconsin too. What part of Wisconsin are you at? I have like tons and tons of places. Um, so it must have been so curious. Maybe. I have been near you. All right, having the season's greeting sentiment here to use on the front of our card. And I grabbed a scrap here of me moonlight and I'm just going to stamp the sentiment. Ooh, good, nice, crisp. And I love, love, love my little mat for being a great, crisp image. Um, it's amazing. It's the little thing. Extreme Southern Wisconsin. Okay. I have some family that live just across the border into Illinois from Wisconsin. Literally across the highway is Wisconsin and they live on the Illinois side. So cool. Lake Geneva. I have been there. Beautiful, beautiful area. All right. I've got my click label punch. I'm going to punch that out. We're going to start putting all the layers of this card together. For those of you new to using punches, I like punching this way so we what we're punching out. Otherwise, when I add it blind, I almost never get it right. Okay, let's make sure I don't lose any of my pieces here. And I'm going to inside layer first. So I'm using my snail for the inside layer. Um, I'm using snail. I'm using it because I can't wait to break out my Stampin's. I'm trying to have willpower and uh, use up what I have first. <laughs> that is a crafter, right? But I'm using this tape glue because I'm able to write and not have bumps from the liquid glue, okay? So there's our ends of our card, simple. And now we're gonna start constructing our card front layer. So first, I'm bringing this a little closer. 
Do you see how those water splotch lifted the ink? And it left our front layer with really beautiful whimsical up. Now I'm gonna get some mini dimensionals here and I'm gonna find a big space to put it. And what I'm going to do is just layer this tree with a dimensional that pops it up over this large tree. I like it like this. Okay, great. And I am going to glue this down onto my vellum here. So got my rubber mat, I want my glue to go everywhere. Silicone mat, I should say. I'm just adhering that a little bit off center from our circle. And then I'm going to take another dimensional and I'm gonna pop this layer. Now, vellum you can see through really easy, so and make sure that I put these dimensionals. Um, in a spot on here that you are not going to see. See that they're there, but they're there. Okay, we're putting this here. Awesome. And now we have to uh, get our greeting down there. Definitely so three layers of this card. And I'm only putting dimensional on the one side because we've got our flat plane here and a couple popped up. I want that to be nice and secure, so I am gonna put a couple of them. There we go. Just like that. Now for uh, I have to be I absolutely hate then I have to use the borders of my demise. It's like, oh, yuck. I know that I should use them, but I really love these pretty normal cut demise. Use my borders. Do any of you have weird crafting pet peeves like that? Oh my God, something about it. I just use those borders. And it saves me so much money, so I do it anyway. I really don't like to do it. All right. So now we're gonna put this what do you think so far our card is almost done we just need a little finishing touch because we softened our colors here went to my clear and frosted epoxy droplets and um, I'm gonna use the frosted ones in the season's greetings card and let's see here I'm gonna put one below the next oh my god go here we go here do one here let's do one here not quite straight i know you can do better than i did but guess what for is done that was really incredibly easy right really incredibly easy um, Lisa's asking if anyone is having problems with yeah Lisa I think there's an internet issue or an issue with the connection of my webcam program so I will work on trying to fix that for next time if I fix it now I'm afraid um, interrupt my video so there we have it we have my original one I just made beautiful that was a lot easier than you thought right Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful, that you got some creative inspiration and some great tips and tricks to make your crafting easier. Now, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. You can shop my online store. There's a link to do that at uh, countrycardsbyrose.blogspot.com. And when you place your order, I would love if you use my November 2020 host code VBYQBQJN if your order is under $150. If your order is over $150,
you're going to want to skip that code because you'll qualify for some Stampin' Up! rewards. And I want to make sure that you are getting the rewards for free product. Better yet, if your order is over $150, you really should be signing up to be a discount shopper. You'll get 20% off your order and you'll get free shipping on your order and then 20% off of your future orders as long as you remain an active demonstrator. If that's something that you're interested in, uh, pop me an email at countrycardsbyrose.gmail.com. All right, thanks again for stopping by and I know that I will be stamping with you soon. Have a great day.